What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome to week two of the CFL. This week we're going to be going against Tyron Coach of the Salmon Arm Shuckles. You can see part of his team on screen right now. Um, I do have to be a little bit quick about this team builder because my time constraints are, are pretty limited. Um, however, uh, let's briefly look at his team. He's got a solid team overall. Uh, he's got a great defensive core with Clefable, Corviknight, and then the, you guys probably can't see, Galarian Corsola. And he's also got Crobat as well. Um, in terms of his offensive presences, most of them are physical attackers, but they are very scary and they have the opportunity to hit really hard. Um, Clefable is, is really difficult to handle just in general due to its versatility and setting up stealth rocks, Calm Mind or Cosmic Power, Stored Power, um, great move coverage with Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, Moonblast, Psychic, um, Reliable Recovery, um, Utility and Wish and Teleport, Heal Bell, uh, two great abilities in Unaware and Magic Guard. It's going to be a really difficult Pokemon to take care of. Corviknight, also really versatile, really great bulk um, defensively and specially defensively. Uh, can get rid of hazards with Defog, can get momentum with U-Turn, can set up with bulk up or iron defense. Um, great move coverage in terms of Brave Bird and Body Press um, and Iron Head as well. So this is a Pokemon that'll be really difficult to handle as well. Mamoswine uh, hits really hard and has a decent uh, speed tier as well. It's got great offensive stab moves in Icicle Crash and Earthquake, Priority and Ice Shard. Uh, knock off for utility, and then it can also set up Stealth Rock and go for Endeavor with like maybe a Focus Sash lead set. Gyarados, um, another offensive presence, although also has decent bulk as well, um, specifically on the special defensive side. Uh, it can also provide some physically um, defensive bulk in, by utilizing Intimidate. Uh, it can also be a setup sweeper with Dragon Dance and something like Moxie, boosting its attack each time it gets a kill. Uh, it's got great move coverage in terms of you know, Fire Fang, Ice Fang, Waterfall, Bounce, Earthquake, and it can also do some utility stuff like Substitute and T-Wave and whatnot. But definitely a threat. Next up is Haxorus. This Pokemon is probably one of the scariest Pokemon on Tyron's team just because of how hard it hits and its move coverage. Um, getting access to both Outrage and Earthquake and um, Close Combat especially close combat, is going to be really scary for my team with its fighting weakness. And after a Dragon Dance, it does so much damage. So this is a Pokemon I'm going to have to play very, very carefully around. It also gets a lot of priority in terms of um, first impression. Galarian Corsola, you guys can't see at the moment, but it's incredibly bulky, not even being uh, O-Code by Spec Chandler um, with Shadow Ball, and that's not even if it's fully specially defensive. It gets Stealth Rock, so it's a great Rock Setter. It can weaken opponents using Strength Staff. Uh, it can Will-O-Wisp to spread Burn. It can set up itself with Calm Mind. That's something Tyrant has used in the past. And yeah, it's um, really difficult to take care of. The thing is, it's weak to knock off in particular, especially because it depends on a Violet for a lot of its bulk. Crobat is probably going to be the second most difficult Pokemon for my team to deal with, just due to its nature um, in handling utility and stall teams. It has access to Taunt, which prevents a lot of recovery and um, that that sort of thing. Um, it also has Super Fang, so it can do half damage to any Pokemon it attacks. And it also has a decent attack stat with a decent Stab Brave Bird. And it can also get momentum with U-Turn and has Reliable Recovery and Roost. So this will be another really difficult Pokemon for my team to deal with. Espeon is a strong special attacker, it can set up with Calm Mind, it has great move coverage in terms of Dazzling Gleam and Psychic and Shadow Ball, so this will be another Pokemon that's a little bit more difficult to handle, but um, like I said, Crobat and Haxorus are probably the biggest threats. Lantern is a decently bulky, mostly because of its HP stat, um, pivot type Pokemon, and has really neat abilities in Volt Absorb and Water Absorb. I think the big thing will be determining which of the two it has. Uh, meaning, is it immune to Scalds or potential Volt Switches? I, if I had to guess, I think he's going to pick um, Volt Absorb, but I'm not 100% sure. It would make him a much more reliable or switch in into something like Heliolisk. Uh, Lantern also has access to Heal Bell, can spread status with Scald, it can get some good coverage with Ice Beam and then Thunderbolt and uh, Momentum with Volt Switch. Phalanx is an interesting Pokemon. Um, it's main gimmick, I guess, is the move No Retreat, which is a plus one boost in every single stat, but it means it cannot switch out. Uh, so it needs to do all the work it does after it does, um, after it uses that move. It gets access to some neat coverage in Close Combat, Throat Chop, and Zen Headbutt, uh, meaning it can hit things pretty hard. 
But again, uh, if you get rid of those stat boosts, it's kind of, um, it's relatively weak. But my team is also weak to fighting types in general, so this is a Pokemon I need to be wary of. Especially because it hit, uh, gets coverage to hit ghost types as well. Arctivish is not too particularly threatening because of its um, low speed tier. However, it does have access to Vicious Rend, which is just a scary move in general, so that's something I need to be wary of. Amora, I'm not really concerned with, just because it's an Amora. So, <laughs> um, with that said, let's get into the team. The first Pokemon I decided on was Specs Chandelure, because, well, Specs Chandelure just devastates so many Pokemon on his team. Um, and more importantly, it's one of the few things I can do to actually counter Corviknight. Um, it 2 it KOs Spideff Clef, it Oko's Spideff Corviknight with Fire Blast, it does so much damage to Galarian Corsola, and I feel like I'll get the opportunity to bring it in relatively safely on something like Lantern or Espeon, um, or really most, most things, and um, especially if I'm up against like Clefable or Corviknight, and I get a free Fire Blast or Shadow Ball, which will do a ton of damage. They could have an Energy Ball, potentially boosted by um, Grassy Terrain. I know you guys can actually see the other team members this time around. And I have Infiltrator so that I don't get pressure stalled by Corviknight with Substitute. That's something I really wanted to avoid. So, yeah, um, Corviknight was one of the specific reasons I actually was so keen on getting Chandler. So I'm happy to bring it this time around, and I hope that using the momentum the rest of my team provides, I'll be able to get it in pretty safely and can fire off some really strong hits that break... Uh, that basically punch holes in his team. Next up is Rillaboom. We're bringing Choice Banded Rillaboom. Uh, this Mon is here to just power through all the things that Chandler doesn't. Um, Woodhammer does so much damage coming off of an, uh, you know, Max Attack, Jolly, uh, but Choice Banded and Grassy Terrain boosted um, Rillaboom. It hits, it Oko's Clef unless it's Max Defense. Um, it Oko's Gyarados, it almost Oko's Haxorus after Rocks, it 2 KOs Galarian Corsola, it does so much damage. And the things that don't get Oko'd by it, um, really do not appreciate taking a knockoff like Crobat or Corviknight, and that's something I'm going to be taking advantage of. I have Grassy Glide for priority, so that if things are weakened, like Gyarados um, or Haxorus, I can pick them off afterwards, or I don't have to worry about Ice Shard from Mamoswine, um, I can... Banded, uh, Grassy Glide, Oko's, Espeon, which is really nice. And then U-Turn is there for momentum. That U-Turn momentum is going to be really important. Because again, a lot of the things that counter Rillaboom, namely Corviknight and Crobat, uh, maybe even Galarian Corsola to a certain extent, really do not appreciate any of Chandler's hits. So if I get a U-Turn correct and then I bring in Chandler, I get a free Fire Blast off, which again is going to just punch holes in his team. So uh, that momentum is going to be really important. Next up is Toxapex. This is actually probably the least useful Pokemon on my team this time around, um, but I need it just to cover a few gaps in my team and as a relative. And it's nice to have it around as a sponge due to Regenerator. Um, mainly, it's here to click Haze against Corviknight if necessary or potentially Gyarados, or potentially Haxorus. Uh, depends a lot on their coverage. Both Gyarados and Haxorus can get um, Earthquake, which would be really scary and do a lot of damage to Toxapex. Granted, it could be halved due to um, Grassy Terrain, so that's something I need to keep up most of the time if I want to use Toxapex as a defensive answer. But it can haze to get rid of any boosts that they're going for, it can Scald for burns, it can knock off to get rid of Choice Bands, Life Orbs, other damage boosting items, which will be really helpful. Um, it could potentially get rid of a Life Orb or Leftovers on the Fable, and it can potentially Scald Burn Corviknight, which would make it useless, which is awesome. Um, I can potentially knock off the, the Violite on Galarian Corsola, uh, you know, Black Sludge on Crobat, whatever it may be, getting knock off on a Pokemon is really helpful. Um, it's also really helpful to have a Regenerator Pokemon against Crobat, which might have Taunt and Super Fang, and Toxapex is really helpful for Phalanx in particular, um, in that it can haze away the no retreat bonuses, it can go for burns, it can knock off whatever it's got going on, and can beat it 1v1. Same with Arctivish, even if it's banded, um, it takes about half from Psychic Fangs, which is not too concerning. So, yeah, um, that's the main rationale behind Toxapex. Also, if it's defensive Clefable, or if it doesn't have Stored Power or Thunderbolt, um, Toxapex falls that as well. So, that's the rationale there. Um, 
Umbreon is going to be really important this match, like it was last week. Uh, namely, Fobble Play is really helpful against Mamoswine, Gyarados, and Haxorus. I can usually take one hit from one of those and Fobble Play back to knock it out. Fobble Play is really helpful for Crobat, it's also really helpful against Espeon, and Arctivish, it, it's really good for just doing damage to most things, and I can also wish pass to you know other team members. It's also especially defensive enough that it can usually take one hit from Espeon and you know hit back with something like Foul Play, or it can come in on Lantern pretty safely. And if things are spreading status with like Thunder Wave or whatnot, I can go into Umbreon to I guess share that status with whoever um, my opponent is using to spread it. So that's really important. And then Baton Pass is going to be really important too. I was considering Taunt or Baton Pass on Umbreon, but I figured that a lot of times he's going to bring in Clefable or he's going to bring in Phalanx, or he's going to bring in something that can try to set up, um, or maybe something that doesn't care too much about Umbreon, like Crobat. Uh, and in doing so, if I go for Baton Pass, or Baton Pass, I can bring in either Chandelure or Rillaboom, whichever is more effective, and keep up that offensive momentum, which will, again, be really important. So, yeah, um, it also really helps uh, with prediction in terms of passing wishes. Um, an opponent, if it can hit, you know, potentially whatever Pokemon I'm trying to heal up uh, super effectively, or can hit Umbreon super effectively, well, if I Baton Pass and stay in and sponge the hit, well, the opponent has to predict whether or not I'm going to stay in and sponge the hit and then Baton Pass out, or if I'm going to immediately hard switch out. And so it's a bit of a 50-50 that I can try to work in my favor. Next up is Blissey. Blissey is doing, you know, a lot of the same. <laughs> it's seismic tossing to get consistent damage on just about anything that it's in against, uh, namely, you know, Clefable or even just Haxorus or whatever it may be. If it gets one seismic toss off, a lot of times it's putting something in the range of Woodhammer or a Specs Shadow Ball or a Specs Fire Blast or a Banded Grassy Glide, whatever it may be. Just one seismic toss is usually um, incredibly helpful in putting things in range. Same, uh, you know, similar. Principle Stealth Rock is going to be really important for just chipping away at things over time, especially Gyarados, Haxorus, um, Corviknight, putting things in range of Flamethrower so I don't have to risk a Fire Blast miss, which is something I'm always going to be looking to avoid. Uh, Blissey is also really helpful for Espeon, his one, really only special attacker I'm worried about, um, but potentially Clefable as well. So I can switch in on those pretty safely. Tank hits pretty well, um, do a decent amount of damage with Seismic Toss. We'll see if he has Reliable Recovery on Espeon with Morning Sun. He probably will with Clefable, but either way, um, I can utilize Blissey again to keep up that offensive momentum by going for Teleport and safely bring in something like Rillaboom or Chandelure and get a really hard hit off. This is also a status sponge with Natural Care. I do need to worry about Espeon's Magic Bounce, but um, again, I can Seismic Toss basically if, if rocks are already up, 3 at KO, but if not, 4 at KO that thing. And if it is Calm Mind, even at plus 4, it's not doing half damage to me. So, again, um, it should be manageable. And then lastly is Ditto. Just because um, scouting information on what Pokemon have what moves allows me to choose which defensive pivots I can go into safely. And if he does manage to set up with something like Gyarados or Haxorus, and Corviknight's already weakened, or Clefable's already weakened. Um, I could potentially reverse sweep. Uh, I can also scout for what's on Crobat, or Espeon, or just about anything. Um, I can potentially beat down Lantern um, with itself, <laughs> or heal up, uh, making him, you know, skeptical to use Volt Switch if I can copy his Volt Absorb. So, yeah, or um, even, you know, Espeon with something like Magic Bounce. It'll be really helpful in that regard. That said, this team is really weak to Haxorus, and Crobat, as I mentioned before. So those are Pokemon I'm going to have to play very carefully around. Namely with Umbreon and potentially Blissey and uh, Toxapex in Crobat's case. So yeah, we'll see. It'll depend a lot on what type of team he brings as to how long this match is or how long it goes. I did watch some of his previous um, matches and I have a difficult time predicting how he plays. I don't think we think very similarly and he, he, I did notice that he tends to not double switch, and he tends to attack what's in front of him. So I'm going to try to play with that in mind, but I'm also going to try to play relatively safely when I can. But um, again, it, it may be a little bit more difficult to see what he's going to do and play around that. But of course, I'm going to try my best. And yeah, um, I may sound a little bit different this time around, because I need to be a little bit more quiet and... 
I have other people around me who have notification alerts and such, but <laughs> um, anyways, I hope you guys are looking forward to the match, but until that match, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>